Greetings, dear friends. I present your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Nissan Primera. Almost all Primera P12 in Russia are front-wheel drive. An all-wheel drive version with a plug-in rear axle exists, but only for the Japanese domestic market. Technically, the four-wheel drive is the same as the Nissan X-Trail, the usual electromagnetic clutch without any tricks. The mechanical part of the Premier transmission is quite reliable. In any case, before runs of 200,000, you only have to change the answers. Further, how lucky! A car with any motor can be with a manual transmission, paired with gasoline engines with a volume of up to 2 liters, a 5-speed gearbox is required, for diesel engines and a gasoline 2.5-liter engine a 6-speed, which was installed after 2004 with 2-liter engines. With 1.8-liter engines, you can find the classic Jetco JF43E automatic transmission, but cars with 2.0 and 2.5-liter engines are equipped with the Jetco REOFO6A variator, known in its later versions as JFO11E. Buying a car with a manual transmission, you should not relax. The resource of the most popular 5-speed gearboxes is very limited both in terms of load and quality of burnings. If you do not change the oil, miss its level or simply regularly overload the box by slipping, overcoming obstacles under traction and vigorous acceleration, then the chances of bearing, bearing failure are very high. At the initial stage, as long as the gearbox housing is not damaged and there are no problems with gears and differential, repair is quite possible. It is not worth delaying with it. After a week or a month of operation of the dropping checkpoint, it will either jam completely or damage so many parts that repairs will be impractical. Most of the problems with manual transmission occur on cars with 1.8 liter engines. The fact is that engines of 1.6 and 1.8 liters are entitled to the 5 stage of the Yonner series. In fact, these are the same boxes that can be found on the Mass Almira, but they differ slightly in configuration. They have a different shell for different splines and there is no speed sensors. This means that a direct bolt-on replacement is not possible. As a result, the prices for used boxes are somewhat overpriced and their choice is not very large. Six-speed gearboxes are noticeably stronger. Paired with gasoline engines, they are practically eternal, but with diesel engines, they, vary, they serve much less. Problems begin due to the same bearing wear and clearance changes, and fourth gear usually suffers. The 6-speed gearbox is noticeably superior to the 5-step gearbox in terms of the cost of the spare parts and it has a more sensitive differential. It is necessary to change the oil in this manual transmission at least once every 40,000 km. All automatic transmissions are well known from other models. The 4-speed JF43E is found on Maxima, Tiana and X-Trail with engines up to 3.5 liters and has already proven itself to be an extremely reliable unit. In combination with engines of 1.8 or even 2.0 liters on the Premier, this box is almost indestructible. If you sometimes change the oil and monitor its level, then it will pass more than the car itself and its motors. The weak point of the box of late releases is the cast turbine engine, wear of the lock lining and unbalance after 200,000 mileage. Brake band wear results in rough gear changes, but many have been driving this way for decades. Solenoids after 200 250,000 also require replacement, and a new block costs about 11 20,000 rubles. Often, if the oil doesn't contain metal wear products in large volumes, you can limit yourself to washing. Jetco REOFO6A variator cannot boast of such a resource, even though its design is considered very successful. On the premiere of the English assembly, it has even a manual gear change and it knows how to emulate steps. But American and Japanese cars are not supposed to do such excesses. They only have a sports mode, which allows you to intensively brake with the engine and thereby greatly wear out the chain. It pushes here and under alternating loads the wear is greatly accelerated. Of the unambiguous advantages of this box, you can single out the efficiency. Unfortunately, the Primera relies on a relatively early version of the unit that doesn't boast the same stable resource as the later JF-011E. But if you follow the simple rules for operating variation variators, it still has good chances to drive 200 to 150,000 km. Unfortunately, our rules are usually violated. What are these rules? No load without warming up, quiet driving without sharp accelerations, no sports and manual modes, do not drive for a long time at speeds up to 20 and at speeds above 130 km per hour, regularly change the oil. 
The variator doesn't like overheating very much and a regular heat exchanger without a thermostat becomes more dirty with age, so the revision of the cooling system is almost mandatory. In general, the unit is quite capricious in terms of maintenance and ordering style, operating style. It shows its full resource only in greenhouse conditions, and a typical Russian driver begins adventures of tier one and a half hundred thousand. Failure of the step motor, solenoids, and pressure control valve, where of the bearings of the cones are the most frequent problems that one has to face even before the general resource wear of the structure. Valves can be repaired as can belt dampers, and replacing burned clutches is also not the most difficult operations. When the belt and cones wear out, it will be easier not to repair but to look for a contract unit from warm countries with neat drivers. Firstly, it is cheaper, and secondly, the more recent versions of the variator holds the load much better. There are a lot of engines of Primera, 1.6 and 1.8 liter QG16DE and QJ18DE, well known from Almira, 2 liter QR20DE, which was installed on the X Trail, and 2.5 liter QR25DE, which differs from the 2 liter only in piston stroke. Diesels are rare, the not very successful Japanese 2.2 liter, or the rather common and beloved by many French volume of 1.9 liters. Each of the diesel engines come came in several power options. It is very rare to find a 2-liter supercharged gasoline engine as SR20VE, SR20DET. All engines got a not very successful cooling system, a complex engine suspension system with very weak and corrosive subframe elements and unsuccessful catalysts. Catalysts are the main cause of serious wear problems in the piston group of gasoline engines and therefore they try to be removed as soon as possible. Overheating, in addition to the lack of power reserves in the radiators, are to blame for weak fans, unreliable pipes and the general tendency of the system to leak out antifreeze. A certain amount of additional trouble for gasoline engines is brought by the not very successful design of the gas pump. Now let's take a closer look at all motors. The 1.6 and 1.8 liter QR16DE and QR18DE engines are the most reliable and simplest. There are motors here that are slightly different from the Japanese versions. They have an aluminum cylinder head cover, a different master dial of the control system, and many other small differences. In general, the quality of English motors is not worse than Japanese ones. Installation of the Japanese version of the motor will require a modification of the reference disk of the control system and replacement of part of the attachment. And yet, such a replacement is practiced since it allows you to get an engine with low mileage and a good residual residual resource, but used motors from Europe are usually very worn out and have a mileage of over 200,000, even in better conditions than ours. The design of the engines is extremely simple, a cast iron block, a timing chain, no hydraulic lifters. The life of the piston group during normal operation and a serviceable catalyst exceeds 300,000 km. In a taxi, such engines can be easily nursed and taken care of for half a million kilometers. But usually the whole thing is spoiled by the catalyst with runs of 150 to 100,000, which begins to dust the ceramics into the cylinders. On average, motors usually withstand up to 200 to 150,000 mileage, but there is already an oil appetite at such a mileage and it is constantly growing. The timing chain usually serves about 150 to 100,000 km, but it can begin to make a very loud noise and require replacement, even with runs of less than 100,000. Unfortunately, its resource is unpredictable. The engine management system doesn't please with perfect stability. Floating revolutions can often be encountered due to contaminated throttle, old plugs or ignition modules. The crankshaft and camshaft position sensors will require replacement after 6 to 8 years of operation. Prices are not high, but you need to be prepared for small troubles. In case of serious wear of piston group, a 1.6 liter engine is bored under the piston, the pistons of a 1.8 liter engine. The cylinder wall turns out to be thin, but this is enough for an atmospheric engine, and 18, 18 mm stoke pistons are cheaper than repair ones. The 2 liter QR20DE and its 2.5 liter QR25DE version differ slightly in cylinder blocks and arrangements of elements. The block here is already aluminum but with cast iron sleeves, the timing chain is chain driven, the control system is simple and the layout is quite successful, but the catalyst on cars before styling dies even earlier than in small engines, providing increased wear of the piston group already up to 200,000 km and the engine eats all with pressure and a lot. 
After restyling, the catalyst was, was seriously changed, it stopped dusting, received a metal base, and in general is no longer a problem. The control unit doesn't provide a normal start in cold weather, and idle turns off and float due to software errors and adaptations. The design of the cylinder head is much more of a hassle, it is too lightweight and therefore cracks easily. There are two reasons. Over tiny spark plugs, due to which the spark plug will suffer, wells suffer, or simply corrosion of the cooling channels, which is less common but can lead to a water hammer. In any case, the motor must be checked by warming up to full temperature, look at the condition of the cylinders for washing, and check with an endoscope for cracks between the valve seats. The presence of traces of sealant in the cooling system indicates that something is wrong with the cylinder head. And even if the sealant was poured to eliminate the leakage of the radiators, then problems with the cylinder head will probably appear soon. It is very sensitive to overheating. Another reason for the ingress of antifreeze into the combustion chamber can be the burnout of the cylinder head gasket, which happens quite often. On machines until 2006, an interesting cooling scheme was used, in which an additional thermostat provided separate cooling of the cylinder block and the head. The system was invented to speed up the heating of the cylinder block relative to the cylinder head and to increase the thermal efficiency due to the higher block temperature. In reality, the floating temperature gradient only increases the coking of the piston group and harms the cylinder head gasket. Tightening the cylinder head bolts is useless. They are weak and you can over-tighten the thread in the block. It is better to simply remove the second thermostat, allowing normal fluid circulation in the unit at a constant rate. If you prevent overheating, you remove an extra thermostat, prevent detonation, tighten, tighten the candles with a torque wrench, remove the catalyst in time, pour only the best oil and put the best filters, then there are chances that the engine will pass more than 200,000 without special expenses. But most often before, it, before this run, you have to do a major overhaul or change the cylinder head. Cars after 2006 have much better chances to travel 300 and even 400,000 km without major repairs. True, this is also unlikely, it is very difficult to provide ideal conditions. So focus on more modest resource figures, and when buying a car with such an engine do not neglect inst instrumental diagnostics. Supercharged SR20 VE motors are famous for their good reliability, but like any supercharged engines for sports versions, they usually cannot boast of a resource, the style of operation doesn't allow. On this information on the problems of Nissan Primera is exhausted. If you know more or disagree with what you heard, I'm waiting for you in the comments.